You have a 61st wedding anniversary coming up this year? Yes. Is that right? One of the questions on my list is, what is your secret to a long and happy marriage? But before I ask you that, uh, let's, let's go back 61 years. Can I answer about the happy marriage? And, and what, what attracted you to each other? What, it, what was it about mom that drew you to her? Other than she obviously was well, it started her. out. <laughs> my sister Dorothy used to get free meals over there all through high school, and she <laughs> used to tell me what a nice girl that was over there. And boy, Dad, you, she said, John, you ought to meet that girl. She's really cute, and she's a lovely lady, and everything. And she said, and it was all true. She really was nice looking and a lovely lady. And uh, the first time I was supposed to go on a date with her, I uh, stood her up because I figured. Yeah, I figured, hey, this is crazy. What do I want without girls? I never went out with ladies very much, or at all. So then she held, she she accepted that standing up, and her mother was going to go on this day too, by the way, if I found out later. And I'm kind of glad that I did renege on it. But her mother said, well, that's the way boys are. I think that's what she said. So, But, but when I got serious about it, well, then I could see that... Uh, Really a nice person and all that. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. I don't. I don't remember you reneging on the first day. I did. I was. I remember very no, well. I don't well, put okay. Up with let's that. put it that no, way then. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't. You reneged on my mother. You didn't come to get pick my mother up to take her out. Is that what it was? That's well, what it something was. like that. <laughs> I mean, this is history that goes back seventy-five years. And I can I don't have the um, exact dates and times and places, you know, but something like that happened. Yeah, that well, then, Mom, what was it about Dad that you found attractive? Well, you know, she was telling Dad what a wonderful girl I was. She was telling me what a wonderful brother she had. And, boy, whoever marries my brother is going to really be lucky. And, oh, he's so good, and, and he's such a good Catholic, and, you know, all this and all that. And... And he, then he's in the army, you know, and talked about writing letters, and so that's how it started. And I, and all over the radio and things, it would say write letters to the boys in the service. So I, I used to write to my cousin and a couple of my cousins, and so I thought, well, I'll write them a letter too. Mm -hmm. Then when he came back, uh, we started dating. But I could I could interrupt here and tell you that. Only two fleas know what they see in each other. <laughs> well, that, then that brings us into, into your marriage, and obviously you, you had ten children. You, you reared eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, what must that have been like in a small house and a stay-at-home mom by necessity? How did you manage all that? Well, it wasn't easy. It wasn't without a lot of difficulty. A lot of frustrations, a lot of arguments. Um, Could I interrupt to say? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say you had a car at your disposal through the whole marriage, and it always ran, so um, I know a lot of other people did not. Right. But Ray, she said about raising the children, too. And, um, but, um, I don't know. I had a lot of faith. I, you know, I like I say, I grew up with nuns and priests, and when I moved here, I just continued that, and that always kind of pulled me through everything. I, it gave me a lot of hope and all that. I really did not like living here the first few years, um, but Dad was a good man. I, you know, you. you um, do what you have to do. That's well, you lived all. here quite a while. What did you see? I can't talk on this tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mom, what, what are your fondest memories of your parents? I have to say the fondest memories of them, they, they, my mom was always home. Most of the time she was home, and she was cooking. And like I say, she had a warm heart for everybody but extremely strict with us kids. And my dad was a very quiet, gentle person. And he used to sit, if my mother went to church at night, he would stay home with us and play games with us. And he, he would walk me down to the tracks uh, with the trains. And I liked the way he defended me. Uh, if any man looked at me 
and would say something. I remember, remember the one time my father was watching through the window and I was in my cousin Sputsy's house next door to me in the yard and I don't, he, the man was talking to me in Italian and my father must have knew something about him and he, my father come running out into the yard and he said, and he's waving his hand, you don't talk to my daughter, I kill you. Something happened to my daughter, I kill you. You get the hell out of here. <laughs> so he took me back in my own house then. It uh, turns out there were a couple of fellas on our street that were always looking for girls, pulling their dresses up and things like that, and that, that happened to be one of them. Do you have a, a bad memory of your parents that you'd be willing to talk about? No, just just the uh, quick use of the strap without asking us, did you do this? So-and-so told me you were in the park with a couple of boys. Were you there? You know, if somebody told them something, they figured it was the truth. And you, you would just get a strapping and you run for the bathroom. That was the only door that had a lock on it. And then you'd yell from the other side of the door, I didn't do that. They were talking about somebody else, not me, you know. And my brothers really got it too. And my brother Dominic got the worst. He would get beat up from his, my uh, one uncle. Um, they were just very strict. You might see it in the old movies sometimes, how strict parents were. And but Grandpa was a soft touch. But Grandpa never, never used a strap on us. My mother was a disciplinarian. Well, how did Grandpa feel about it when your mom did use the strap? Well, he defended me. A few times he would defend me. When my mom was in the hospital and she would hear some gossip, then my father would um, step in. But my father also loved to play cards and drink. He, he drank a lot. He, many times he would drink two, two bottles of wine maybe at night, and then he'd go to bed. Um, he would play cards at the saloon, and we were allowed to go up to the saloon with the jar and let them fill it with beer, and we'd have to walk very carefully with it all the way home. We did that. <laughs> It was very interesting, very different. <laughs> what about you, Dad? What would be your fondest memory of any of the homes that you uh, were reared up in? <clears throat> well, I like the Bohemian home the best because they cooked well, they were decent. I hardly ever got strapped there. And uh, I was only there for three years. And then, of course, I went to a Bohemian school, too, for, for the year that I was there. Holy Family on the east side. It's still there mm -hmm. on court, but it's, I don't think it's a Catholic school anymore. And uh, I was pretty much promoted. That's how I got involved in uh, polka dancing, or polka music at least. I played every Sunday uh, for the three years that I was there. So I liked it. Tell them why you had to leave. Hmm? Tell them why you had to leave there. Uh, oh, the that man died. Found, yeah, that you found him. Dad. Oh, yeah, he came, the, he came uh, home one day looking for his wife. He said he wanted to talk to her. I said, well... She isn't here right now, but she'd be in a little while. And, and uh, he went into the bathroom for a guy, and next thing I, know, I hear a big thump. And I'm opening the bathroom there, and, and there he is, uh, slumped in the bathtub. And uh, then I called the neighbor next door, and I says, well, he's slumped in the bathroom. It looks like he's unconscious or whatever. And so the guy's staring at him. I said, well, don't you think you should give him artificial respiration or something? And the guy said, that's a good idea. So. But the buddy was already dead when the funeral, when the, um, uh, what was the 911, which they didn't have at that time. Well, then they tried, and poor guy was dead, yeah. Hell of a nice guy. 44, 42 years old, you know, an old guy, you know. At that time, everybody was old when they were 40, you know. Yeah. And a uh, very decent man. What prompted people to take in foster children, particularly the four or five that you came with with your family? What happened, what? What would, what would motivate a family 
to be a foster parent family. When oh, yeah, I often wondered that myself. Uh, some of them, as a matter of fact, I had heard that in the 19, early 30s, they did it for money, you know, which is all right, too. And also, again, later on, but uh, these people actually had one son, this uh, Bohemian people, and I guess they figured their son was about 15 at that time, that uh, he should have somewhat of brothers and sisters in the house, and that was me and my brother and uh, and uh, sister Dorothy, so we all got along pretty good. Mm -hmm. I never particularly liked the guy that well that I'm supposed to be friendly with, but uh, we both survived it, and it was okay. I'd like to see him again sometime. Do you want to look at any of the pictures? Okay, let's, uh, let's stop for a minute. Now, do we get questions?